Hey, happy 2024, kiddies, and what's that smell? No, it's not that. It's actually a fresh new year stretching up before us, packed to the bollocks with wonder and opportunity and dozens and dozens of new smartphones boasting minus spec upgrades over their 2023 counterparts. Good thing then that I got f tons of whiskey for Christmas. Lol. <coughs> oh, don't know about you boys and girls, but your Uncle Spurt still has multiple Iceland party platters lodged deep inside of his guts. God bless the festive season, eh? I swear to God I've eaten nothing but beige for the last 10 days straight. I'll tell you what, it's going to take an atomic strength enema to shift them pork goujons. Anyway, before I rush off to down several bowls of Special K marinated in pints of prune juice, let's have a bit of a squint at just one of those smartphones lingering right on the horizon. One that's been leaked to absolute buggery over the entire holidays. I'm talking about the Nothing Phone 2A, which should hopefully offer those usual epilepsy bother and flashy shenanigans for a price that's so surprising it'll hopefully encourage those cheddar blocks and eggy bites to move right along. So brace yourself, kiddies. First Expert Weekly of 2024. Here we go. Expert Weekly. Now, as a super quick recap for anyone who drank their short-term memories into sweet oblivion over Christmas, this right here is Nothing's most recent smartphone, the Nothing Phone 2. It's a more premium device boasting beefified performance and even more spangly disco lights compared with the original. However, since then, Colpe and Co have concentrated on more budget-friendly produce, such as this here ridiculously cheap Nothing Watch Pro as well as some kind of batch mental stuff like a transparent lab coat which costs 160 quid and yet makes you look like an IT support guy cosplaying as a butcher. Anyway, as the Nothing Phone 2 was a big specs upgrade versus the original Nothing Phone, it also ended up costing quite a bit more. And that's where the Nothing Phone 2A comes in. I'm expecting it to replace the original Nothing Phone with some specs that sort of sit somewhere in between 1 and 2. And that's certainly backed up by the price, which according to some of the latest leaks should come in at under 400 quid. Here's hoping around the 350 mark. And so far, those rumours are pointing to a launch sometime in February for the Nothing Phone 2A. So I'm expecting it to be officially wanged at our faces during Mobile World Congress. Big MWC 24 Expo, which will happen right at the arse end of Feb. And if that's the case, well, great news. I will be at MWC as usual, so I can have a proper fondle with the Nothing Phone 2A and do a bit of a video. Although, yeah, MWC does take place in Barcelona, so there's an extremely good chance I'm just going to skive off of the Nothing launch and go tan myself on the beach with a big bag of Estrellas and a slab of ham on. And it'll only be about 12 degrees, but I'll still burn like a bastard in about five minutes. Now, it seems like the Nothing Phone 2A will boast a very similar design to the Nothing Phone 2. In fact, it may be almost identical with yet another 6.7 inch screen and a pleasingly slender finish. Although that glyph light shenanigans around back will apparently be reduced to just a few twinkling strips for the 2A if these leaked picks aren't a load of made up cobblers. So a bit less customization then for all of your flashing notifications. Although it does appear that the Nothing Phone 2A will still support those new glyph features like the countdown timer. And to save a wee bit more cash, it looks like Nothing may slap a basic plastic frame on the Phone 2A versus the aluminium frame of the Nothing Phone 2. And there may be a downgrade for that Gorilla Glass front and back. Oh, and that colour choice is once again apparently black or white. Whoop! As for the display, well that's said to be the same as that flagship, so expect an eye-pleasing AMOLED panel with Full HD Plus resolution and 120Hz refresh rate, backed by a classy stereo speaker setup. And as for the cameras, well, nothing is rumoured to be sticking with that dual 50 megapixel setup. And they may even be relying on the same pair of sensors that were slapped on both the Nothing Phone 2 and the original Nothing Phone 1. Although there's also some hot online chat that that primary sensor will be swapped out and replaced with the Isocell effort found bunged in the Moto G84. And that's another phone I reviewed near the end of 2023, which I think had a decent-ish camera. I don't know, I mean, to be honest, I was drinking like a mother around then, so maybe just go watch my Moto G84 review and see what I said and hopefully it'll make some kind of sense. And meanwhile, up front, you'll allegedly find another 32 meg selfie snapper using Sony's IMX615, same as the Phone 2. Now, one area that should definitely see a major change is the actual chipset that runs the show. 
And apparently out will go the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 that powered the Nothing Phone 2, and instead the Nothing Phone 2A will be powered by MediaTek's Dimensity 7200, with your choice of 8 or 12 gigs of that tasty RAM stuff. Now, I've already tested the upcoming Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus from Xiaomi, which was powered by the Dimensity 7200 in its Ultra form. And this handled Genshin Impact absolutely perfectly, so my team of randos could get smacked in the chops over and over by big scary monster types with a beautifully fluid frame rate. And that certainly boards well for the Nothing Phone 2A, so here's hoping for top draw performance at a nice price, what what. And also, while the battery capacity is likely to remain the same as the Nothing Phone 2 flagship, we may see a dip in the wired charging abilities from 45 watts. While I'm guessing the wireless charging tech might also be stripped right out to save a few bucks. And other leaks include a bunch of official wallpapers that will come bunged on the Nothing Phone 2A, which once again looks like they hired a photographer who only owns a single lens and it's a shitty macro one. And this guy basically just snorts a whole bucket of glue and then goes f***ing crazy on his kid's Lego collection or something. So that right there, in a tasty wee nutshell, is the fresh new Nothing Phone 2A, which should be launching in just over a month for around 350 to 400 GBPs. So what do you reckon? Tasty bit of affordable tech or massive sack of flashing arse? Please let us know in the comments below. And now, if you've got nothing better to do, why not stick around a bit longer for the part of the show that makes me want to slap on one of them Nothing lab coats and go fetch my best stabbing knife? It's fewer comments. Fewer comments. <laughs> Alrighty then, first comment of 2024 comes courtesy of Rare Parrot, who says, don't overdo the Xmas punch. It's far too effing late for that bit of advice, but cheers anyway, mate. NZ4814 says, always love a Christmas quickie with uncle, while DJ Nexus 69 simply says, F Christmas. Definitely getting in the festive spirit right there. But yeah, fair enough, Christmas certainly isn't for everyone, there's lots of bad stuff mixed in with all the good, like the sudden and completely unwarranted emergence of sprouts, and of course, the bloody Christmas songs. You know, as if we didn't already get Ed Sheeran shoved down our throats with tedious regularity. Now the ginger is right there on the telly ordering us to cheer up because it's Christmas, in it, And he's roped in his showbiz mate Elton John. And despite my best attempts to avoid it, I must have heard that song about two dozen times right now, which is about 24 times too many. And yeah, I couldn't even begin to hum it or sing it because it's just so perfectly bland and forgettable. I mean, I'd say it was probably written by an AI, except an emotionless robot would probably do a better job. Have a cheeky glass of wine and sit around the fire. All our loved ones having fun, not arguing or anything. It's a realistic and representative image of Christmas. Yeah, whatever, Ed. Go f a rabid reindeer, you mouldy sack of Santa jizz. Uh, Grim J says, which one is Mr. Wanksock? Well, I mean, that's just rude. Mythic Sun says, Chris, you're the only guy I can think of who would struggle to get on a blood donation list because the doctors wouldn't want to risk giving the patient alcohol poisoning by mistake. I mean, to be honest, that's probably the least of my ailments that would keep me from giving blood. If someone ever actually received a transfusion of my blood, I just imagine they would instantly dissolve like a gremlin in sunlight. Uh, Noisy Boy says, I just saw MKBHD give the best battery of the year award to the iPhone 15 Plus, and it reminded me exactly why Uncle Spurt is the best tech reviewer. I mean, I will say, thankfully, my iPhone 15 Pro Plus's battery life is no longer a complete arse now they've absolutely patched it to buggery. But yeah, it's far from the best phone for battery life in 2023. I can think of about two dozen Androids that have it absolutely whipped. Like, as far as the flagship score, the S23 Ultra is still absolute champion. But if you want truly outstanding battery life, you really can't beat some of the more budget-friendly smartphones with their energy-efficient processors and everything. I mean, take like yeah, the Honor Magic 6 Lite, which I've only just reviewed. Review should be going live tomorrow if I don't get blackout drunk tonight and forget to upload it. And this thing will keep you going for like two full days between charges, even if you're absolutely abusing it. I'd really like to see an iPhone do that. And on that subject, while I was reviewing the Honor Magic 6 Lite, I had quite a few iPhone users come up to me and just remark that they couldn't believe smartphones could actually be this skinny. Do love that lovely leathery style arse as well. Great stuff. 
Uh, next up, Grebo and Gaspard, who was teasing us in the previous episode about his hometown, saying that the pints cost well under a fiver, and yet never actually bothered to tell us where his hometown was. Uh, says, I purposefully left out the town where I live due to already having too many DFLs down from Londoners taking over the town. Put it this way, I'm an hour and a half by high speed train on the southeastern coast. I mean, yeah, that does, that's a pretty good explanation, to be fair. Like, southern coastal town, you will be absolutely overrun by unbearable middle-class dickheads and their obnoxious families. People like me, in fact, who come for the, uh, the actual fresh air and the cheap booze. Um, <laughs> I've got no idea how to pronounce this next one, so I'm just going to flash it up on the screen right here. Uh, it says, Marquez Brownlee might have a fancier setup, but we have a bald drunk man burping and talking to a sock puppet. I mean, uh, yeah, got to work with what you got, I guess. He has a lot of money in a fancy studio. I have a sock with eyeballs. Uh, Jaud, Jaud Sem, Sematu? Jaud Sematau says, Easy on the booze, Chris. Greetings from a lad in Belgium. <laughs> I mean, it, it says a lot that the only advice I ever seem to receive other than enough with the potty mouth and the smart ass comments, please. I just want to hear about the fun. Thank you very much. Is, hey, maybe just think about putting that pint of vodka down occasionally. Eh, you big old souse you. Sousy McSouseton. Knowles Souse Party. That is definitely good advice, though, to be fair. If you're ever in Belgium and uh, you go go for a bit of a drink, that stuff is it's like f***ing 13%. It's lethal, man. I swear to God, the monks that brew this must have livers like concrete. John Whitehead says, Thanks for a year's worth of totally tasteless crotch talk and banging phone reviews. You and Mr. Wang Sock should get a movie deal. I mean, given some of the stuff that Netflix has commissioned recently, yeah, I should be able to get at least a mill or two for the soggy adventures of Mr. Wang Sock. Mr. Nokik says, not sure what Techspert means by quickie, but 16 plus minutes is not a quickie by my standards. Yep, same, to be fair, unless I've had a few and it takes me 15 and a half minutes just to get my pants off. Uh, Bryce6314 says, just one thing, you said in your review of the Red Magic 9 Pro that it's the first time you fondled the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, but you'd already reviewed the iQ12 with it in. I'm confused. Yes, you see, the reason for this is that I shot the Red Magic video about a month before the reviews embargo lifted, so I actually technically did fondle that before the iQ12, which I got after the Red Magic, but whose review embargo lifted earlier, if that makes any sense. And if it doesn't, it's incredibly f***ing boring and I'm not seeing it again. And next, John Paul Graham with what looks suspiciously like an actual tech question. Ugh. If you could get the Razer 40 or the Nothing 2 with 512 gigs for the same price, what would you go for? I do really like the Nothing Phone 2. There's something about it, definitely. Um, but I'd probably go for the Razer, to be honest, because I'm just super horny for that phone. I've only got two minutes left to finish shooting this video, so I better make these last couple of comments. Philip O'Rafferty says, I've never heard another tech reviewer use the term God Vista. That's quite clearly how I managed to get my million subs. And last up, Damien Clark says, Bear Grylls did say that things that taste bad are good for you, apparently. I mean, I'm not entirely sure I would trust the word of someone who merrily knocks back pints of his own piss and scoops up animal sh** to forage around in it for half-digested berries. But then, to be fair, it could be worse. You could go for dinner at a Toby Carvery. So anyway, massive thanks to everyone who actually watched the Christmas extravaganza at the end of last year and then actually stuck around long enough to write a comment in it as well. Absolute masochists. Uh, please do the tappy taps down below. Any burning questions you have, any entertaining nuggets of enlightenment you want to share, certainly we'll try and smash our way through as many of those as possible next week. And speaking of next week, next week, next week, what the f is next week? So next week, of course, it all kicks off over in Vegas, good old CES. I'm not going to be there, but I have had some sneaky hands on with some goodies, so expect a couple of videos to pop up. You got Isus launching some shenanigans on Tuesday, so you can expect a fresh new ROG phone as well as some clever bollocks laptops. We've also got Poco phones launching on Thursday the 11th, so it's going to be a bloody busy week. And then I'm hoping to run through some of the best upcoming smartphones in 2024 in next week's Techspert Weekly. So again, if there's any phones you're particularly looking forward to, let us know down below. Have yourselves a bloody wonderful weekend, whatever you're up to, and I'll hopefully see you next week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.